Okay, in this section of the class, we're going to talk about something very, very important in physics, and that is the concept of a scalar and a vector. You're going to talk about vectors and scalars all throughout physics in basically every chapter <coughs> in uh, your physics textbook. So what is a scalar? Um, in simplest terms, a scalar, it has magnitude, but no direction. What does that mean? It's just a number that uh, represents how big or small something is, but there's no direction involved to it. An example of a scalar would be the pressure in this room. This is atmospheric pressure. There's a certain you know force the air is exerting on my body, but it's kind of um, every place I go, it's really the same value, and it's, it's kind of um, equal, and it doesn't have a, a specific direction associated with it. So pressure would be one. Temperature is probably a, even a better an example. Um, if you take the temperature of a... Of a, of a can of Coke or something like that. At the top, the temperature is going to be a number. At the bottom, the temperature is going to be probably the same number. Everywhere you measure, you're going to get some temperature, 50 degrees. But there's no direction associated with it, so it's called a scalar. Okay, um, a vector is um, is a, a kind of like a scalar, except it has magnitude and direction. Okay, so um, <clears throat> there's lots of examples of vectors in real life. You you use them and you're 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 very comfortable with them, you know, all the time. For instance, velocity is a vector quantity. Um, I can drive my car down the road that direction at 50 miles an hour. So I have a magnitude, which is the 50 miles an hour, and the direction is you know east. Okay, if I travel north at 50 miles an hour, well that's a different vector because. Although I'm still going the same speed, I'm going a different direction, and so it's magnitude and direction, and that's what a vector is. There's tons of other uh, ve vectors in real life. Um, the electric field, um, yeah, you know, the magnetic field, when you have uh, two magnets and you start to plot the magnetic field lines, they have a, a magnitude, in other words, a strength, and they have a direction, so they're pointing in a certain direction. So how do we represent vectors <coughs> in physics? Um, we generally represent a vector as an arrow, okay? So this is some, some vector, okay? And I'll put a little arrow over the top to des designate the fact that it's a vector. So what this represents is the, the length of the arrow is the magnitude, and then of course the direction is just whichever way it's pointing. So this vector is different than this vector. Even though they're pointed in the same direction, this one is a smaller magnitude than this one, okay? So if this were the speed of a car, for instance, then this would be going faster than this one. And, uh, you know, this is a different vector than this, because although it's roughly the same size, it's traveling in a different direction. So because, you know, if the magnitude is different or if the direction is different, you know, then the, the end result is the vector is describing something different. And that's why these things are really useful, because we actually use these things in real life. So <clears throat> we need to talk about the concept of how do you add and subtract vectors. And I think you'll understand why that's useful here in a second. Here I have a box. It's just some box sitting on a floor, or just kind of suspended in space here. Okay, And I'm going to act on this box with two vectors. And you'll see what I'm talking about here. Here's one vector. Okay, I'm going to say the vector A is 10 newtons. Now we haven't talked about newtons at all up to this point. I'm introducing things as we go along here. A newton in physics is the uh, equivalent of a pound. It's, it's kind of in terms of the big concept here. It's a unit of force. Okay, So in English units you probably hear about pounds and ounces and things like that. In physics you're going to talk about newtons. Newton is just a unit of force. Uh, it's a, you, know, you, could, you could go figure out um, exactly how much a newton is, and we're going to talk a little bit about that, but it's just a unit of force, so it's kind of like pounds, so just think of it in terms of, of a unit of force. So here, I'm acting on this box by this vector. The length of the arrow is supposed to represent the fact that it's 10 newtons, so this arrow is just, for the sake of argument, 10 newtons, which is just some, some unit of force, and it's pointed up like this, and so I'm pushing the box kind of up like that with a, a force equal to what I'm calling 10 newtons. Okay, and I'm also going to act on it with another force, B, and I'm going to say this force is 20 newtons. So, you know, okay, maybe my drawing isn't exactly perfect, but what I'm trying to, to show here is this, this vector is about twice as long as this one, so the force is represented by this one is about twice as big as that one. 
um, but also notice that it's acting in a different direction. So I've got vector A and vector B, and they're both acting on this box. Now, how could you set this up in real life? You could have um, some person, you know, a person down here pushing upward at this, you know, force, and you could have a separate person, you know, pushing on the box in a slightly different direction. And the question is, you know, what is this box going to do? You've got two different forces acting on the box, and how's the box going to move? So this is kind of a classic problem in physics, and in order to figure that out, you need to know how to, um, how to add vectors.